I'm working through the work energy and power question of the 2019 NSC physics paper and work energy and power is always question 5 in the physics paper. Question 5 reads as follows. An object of mass 1.8 kilograms slides down a rough curved track and passes point A which is 1.5 meters above the ground at a speed of 0.95 meters per second. The object reaches point B at the bottom of the track at a speed of 4 meters per second. Question 5.1 define the term conservative force and the definition as given in the guideline document is a force for which the work done in moving an object between two points is independent of the path that is taken. Question 5.2 then reads Name the conservative force acting on this object and the only conservative force that is acting on this object during this motion is the force of gravity and we can either call it the gravitational force or we can just say gravity here. Important to note that in the guideline document the only conservative force that ever acts on these objects or in these type of questions is the gravitational force where the other conservative forces that do exist are the electrostatic force as well as an elastic force. Question 5.3 reads, is the mechanical energy conserved as the object slides from point A to point B? Choose either yes or no and give a reason for your answer. Important to remember here that they have told us that this object slides down a rough track and rough track we know automatically implies that there is friction that is acting on this object. We know that friction is a non-conservative force and when there are non-conservative forces acting on an object the mechanical energy will certainly not be conserved. So our answer to question 5.3 firstly is no, mechanical energy is not conserved. The reason for that is that friction is acting on this object so we say that because there is friction, which is a non-conservative force, this object is not in an isolated system. It is not an isolated system, and therefore mechanical energy is not conserved. Question 5.4 then reads, Calculate the gravitational potential energy of the object when it was at point A. Point A, we have been told, is 1.5 meters above the ground, and the formula as given in the formula sheet for gravitational potential energy is that gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by gravitational acceleration multiplied by its vertical height above the ground. The mass of this object must always be substituted into this formula in kilograms, given as 1.8 kilograms. Gravitational acceleration on Earth is 9.8 and its vertical height above the ground, 1.5 meters. Important to note here once again that the gravitational force only refers to the perpendicular height, the vertical height above the ground, irrespective of the fact that this is going to travel down a curved surface. And what we find then is that this object has a gravitational potential energy of 26.46 joules. Important to remember to give the correct units here. Question 5.5 then reads, using energy principles, calculate the work done by friction on the object as it slides from point A to point B. And so we know that there is a non-conservative force acting on this object. And so we want to use a formula that takes that into account. So there are a number of options here. We can use the formula, the work done by the non-conservative force, because we've been told that there is friction, is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the change in potential energy. Important to write these formulas as given in the formula sheet. We could also use the formula network is equal to the change in kinetic energy. I'm going to use the formula that only takes the non-conservative force and work into account because that makes it easier and it means that we do not need to consider gravity. So here we have the work done by the non-conservative force which we know 
is the work done by friction, which is equal to the change in kinetic energy, which is one half times the mass, which has not changed, times final velocity minus the initial velocity, and change in potential energy, once again, mass does not change, gravitational acceleration does not change, it is only the height of this object above the ground that does change. We can then substitute in the values that we have, where we know the mass of the object is 1.8 kilograms. The final velocity of this object, we have been told, is 4 meters per second. That is 4 meters per second squared. The initial velocity of this object, we were told, was initially 0 0.95 meters per second. And then we substitute once again the mass of 1.8, gravitational acceleration of 9.8, its initial height above the ground, 1.5 meters, excuse me, the final height above the ground, we say it has reached the bottom of the slope, which means its final height is zero. The initial height is 1.5 meters, and we can then substitute these into our calculator where we get an answer of negative 12.87 joules. The negative answer does make sense here because we know that friction is a non-conservative force. We know the friction is removing energy from the system. Finally, question 5.6. The surface BC in the diagram above is frictionless. 5.6 reads, what is the value of the network done on the object as it slides from point B to point C? And what we need to realize here is that this object is sliding because it had an initial velocity at this point. At this point, the surface becomes frictionless. There is no longer a gravitational component that is moving this object sideways. There is no longer any force that is acting in the direction of motion, where we know that in order to calculate the amount of work done by a force, it is force times displacement. And since there is no force that is acting in the direction of displacement on this object, we say that the network done on this object between these two points is zero. Important to note here for the definition at question 5.1, conservative force, we must specify it is the work done in moving an object between two points that is independent. This word independent of path taken is very important. Finally, we must remember that question 5.5 asks using energy principles. This statement over here means that we may not use the formula F net is equal to mass times acceleration. Although we would be able to get the correct answer using this formula, that is not what the question asks. The question asks using energy principles, which means that we must either use the formula for work done by the non-conservative force or the formula for network done on an object.